of inheritance is called incomplete dominance. And in incomplete dominance, we have a blending situation. So you have the homozygous dominant, which is one color. You have the homozygous recessive, which is another color. And then the heterozygote, which has one dominant and one recessive allele, is going to be a, a mixture or a blending. So it would be like a black horse with a white horse, and all of the offspring would be gray horses. So um, the main example that you'll usually hear about is um, flower color and sap dragons. Um, red is dominant to white. So if we cross a red plant, homozygous dominant, with a white plant that's homozygous recessive, we make the punnet square, we fertilize, we get all heterozygous offsprings, which should not be surprising, but instead of all of these being red because they have a big R, they are all pink. We get a blending. So that's one clue that you're looking at an incompletely dominant trait. You'll have three phenotypes, in this case red, white, and pink, instead of just two, which would be red and white. Um, then we can cross two pinks. Two pink heterozygotes are going to result in a one to two to one phenotypic ratio. One white, two pinks, and one red. And let's look at that with the Punnett squares so you can see what that looks like. So now I have big R, little r crossed with big R, little r. I'm going to make my Punnett square. Each parent can give either a big R or a little r. And then I fertilize, keeping my big R's first. So this one here is going to be red, that is homozygous dominant. The one that is heterozygous will be pink, as will this one. So we have two pinks. And then the homozygous recessive will be white. So we have a 1 to 2 to 1 phenotypic ratio. And again, we see all three phenotypes all three colors. So let's do an example Punnett square. In radishes, two genes are incompletely dominant for shape. So notice I've said in the question incomplete dominance. You use exactly the same letters, you just have to remember that the heterozygote is going to be a different color. Long radishes are dominant over round radishes and heterozygous radishes are oval. So let's write down what we know. That's pretty standard with all of our pennant squares, write down what we know. Big R is round, no, long. Let's, yeah, so big R for radish is long. Recessive, and in this case it's gonna be homozygous dominant. Homozygous recessive is round, and if they are heterozygote, they're gonna be oval, because oval is sort of a, a blending between long and round. Let's see what, what type of radishes we are crossing. It says draw a pennant square that crosses a long radish with an oval radish. So our long one is going to be homozygous dominant, and our oval one is going to be heterozygous. So we can make our pennant square. The um, long one can give a big R or a big R. The round one can give a big R or a little r, sorry, oval. And then we will fertilize in the boxes. And here are our offspring. We have two that are homozygous dominant, so they will both be long. And we have two that are heterozygous, so they will both be oval. Let's see what question it's asking us. What percentage of the offspring will be round? Well, we just said that 50% of them are long and 50% of them are oval, so the answer is 0% are round. And every once in a while, I'll ask you one like this where the correct answer is 0. And I'm not trying to trick you. So if you get a 0 answer, that you could be absolutely spot on correct. Let's do another example. One more to solidify. An incompletely dominant gene controls the color of chickens so that homozygous dominant produces black, heterozygous produces gray, and homozygous recessive produces a white chicken. So again, we're going to write down what we know. This time we're using B's instead of R's. But we know that homozygous dominant is a black heterozygous 
homozygous is gray. And homozygous recessive is white. So, we need to draw a pennant square that shows the mating between a black chicken and a gray chicken. Okay, so black, homozygous dominant, gray is heterozygous. This is going to be similar to the one we just did. Put the gametes on the top and the side. And we fertilize in the boxes. And we need to find out then, it's asking us on the PowerPoint, what percentage of the offspring will be gray? So let's look and see. Let's go back to the pundit square. These two are homozygous dominant, so they are both going to be black, so that's not gray. These two, however, are gray, right? They're both heterozygous. So our answer would be 50% of the offspring are gray. Good luck with your incomplete dominance punnet squares.